So, it's now been officially about two years since the PlayStation 5 released. Thanks to a messy two years in general and scalpers and shortages, we know it still hasn't been easy for some folks to get their hands on this thing, but uh, we figured we'd do a little report card. You know, a look back and an update on all things PlayStation, from the games to the accessory to how the console itself is doing and the service is offered. And uh, don't worry, we're also going to do one of these videos for Xbox as well. Last year we did PS5 one year later, so now here's PS5 two years later. First, let's try and talk sales and availability. Now, last year when we made that one year later video, these consoles were still really tricky to get, like I had said. Uh, they were out there, people had them, but it was clear a lot more people wanted one but couldn't find one thanks to a year of chip shortage, availability issues, scalpers, and price gouging, it has been a pain in the ass for many consumers out there, and honestly, a bit of a pain for us too, knowing we're making videos for games that some people really want to play and were ready to pay up for but couldn't actually lock one down. Comments and social media after a year continued to be filled with jokes about getting a PS5. Crazy stuff, and I, I think it was safe to say that the start for both next-gen consoles was a bit rocky. But for the PlayStation 5, things do seem to be getting better, finally thankfully, and we have a couple of things to point to. Now in June, Sony's leader of global sales and business operations stated a significant ramp up in production for this holiday season. And along with that, multiple reports have suggested that things have improved and Sony is working to step it up even more with uh, Sony apparently wanting to ship at the very least 30 million units in fiscal year 23. And that's a 70% jump, a big increase from their fiscal year of 2022 goal that was at 18 million consoles. And more recently in its newest earnings call, Sony did sell 3.3 million PS5s in this most recent quarter, which may not sound like a lot, but it is still heading towards its year target of 18 million. And in the grand scheme of things, from the numbers we've currently gotten, Sony has officially sold 25 million consoles. And this was done amidst not only shortages, but news of, in this second year, a price increase in multiple countries. Yes, in August of 2022, Sony announced a roughly, roughly 10% price increase for the PlayStation 5 in parts of Europe, the UK, Japan, China, and Australia, citing inflation and issues. Sony is actually on record during that recent earnings call I mentioned before, specifically mentioning that the price increase didn't dampen the demand. So if that is to be believed, then I guess that's a sign that people are still buying these puppies up. Of course, if you want to read up on some of this uh, Inside Baseball stuff we referenced, all the sources are linked in the description down below. Now, along with that, it feels like two years in, Sony has finally really opened up on the accessory front. Whereas things released pretty simple, you know, the lineup, there was a remote, a charging stand, the headset, you know, now we have a way bigger variety of official colors for the controllers and a handful of official PlayStation console covers. So you can have it in black or a few other colors, along with the most recent edition of a cool camouflage look. Now, there's been a bunch of third party stuff for a while now, pretty soon after launch, but it is nice to see Sony really start to ramp it up on their end. And we're looking forward to seeing if there's anything else they got up their sleeves, any special edition consoles down the line, because they were a highlight of the PS4, if you ask me, that Spidey PS4 Pro. Mm. But one of their biggest moves most recently was the announcement of their DualSense Edge wireless controller, the premium, more expensive version of the DualSense with more options, customizable controls, swappable stick caps, remappable buttons, different control profiles, more adjusting for sensitivity, and a really handy dandy carrying case, basically their version of the Xbox Elite controller. It retails for 200 bucks and it's releasing January 26th, 2023, so we can't really technically include it in our two years later video because we don't have our hands on it yet, we don't know if it's actually gonna be any good, but the fact that they have big crazy accessories like this on the horizon, along with, of course, PlayStation VR 2, things are looking pretty promising. Just some more ways to keep your wallet busy, I guess. Now in the case of the dual sense edge and all that accessory stuff more choice is better either third party or first party but 
where we're stuck with Sony is the user interface, you know, the menus and stuff. And on the interface side, the PS5 hasn't changed too much. It's a simple interface, but we would have liked to have seen a few more improvements. That being said, the ones that were made over the course of this time are still significant. Activity cards are cleaned up, the trophies view was overhauled, and the whole share pop-up interface thing for screenshots and videos is much nicer now, at least in our opinion. But one of the biggest things we enjoyed was folders for your game library. Instead of an endless scroll of games, things can be a bit more organized, and even even if it ain't perfect, it makes a hell of a difference. Uh, you group games into what are called game lists, and it helps you keep things a bit more under control, especially if you own a lot of games over the lifetime of a PlayStation account. Now, overall, we wish we still had a bit more customization and maybe even have the card system de-emphasized a bit or have more options to turn some stuff off since we don't use it much here, but we're looking forward to seeing what else comes, specifically Discord integration, which at this point should be pretty soon, which will be really cool to see. I wonder how far they're gonna take the integration or whether it's just half-assed or not. Full Discord could be pretty crazy though. But that's not the stuff that's even the most important really, it's the games. Now, in our last video, we covered the first year with stuff uh, like PlayStation 4 games updated to support the PS5 tech and first party games like Demon's Souls, Spidey, Miles Morales, Returnal, Kena Bridge of Spirits, Ratchet and Clank, and then Deathloop and a bunch of other third party titles. Solid stuff all around, a good amount of stuff to play, but the real big blockbuster blowouts some of us were waiting for are here now. In the second year of the PlayStation 5, more recently we've seen MLB The Show, Gran Turismo 7, which uh, certainly had some monetization issues and stuff worth picking on, but is otherwise another big, graphically impressive and detailed Gran Turismo game. Uh, also, The Last of Us Part 1, a remake that we weren't sure we really needed, but it did turn out pretty well done. It's very impressive looking and really fun to replay. Horizon Forbidden West looked absolutely freaking stunning and was a big, massive game. Maybe it didn't take the world by storm quite like Elden Ring did at the time because they released in a similar window, but still absolutely a worthy follow-up to Zero Dawn. And most recently, of course, God of War Ragnarok, a game that is also available on PS4, mind you, but a pretty damn good game regardless. It's a bigger, crazier sequel with more gameplay, more monsters to fight, a bigger story, with more characters, and it's also just a good old fashioned video game. Now, taking a look at Sony or Microsoft's libraries one year later or two years later, in our opinion, is just a bit more subjective. You know, you might only be into certain genres or franchises, so the actual number of games may not matter much to you, but at the very least, we'll say here that we've been consistently having fun. Of course, we always want more games, though. We're very greedy here, uh, and we're looking forward to what other big blockbusters Sony has up their sleeves for the future of the PS5 line. Life cycle. Now, the area where PlayStation has been bulking up is in the services, not only just in like buying up companies and building up live service games in the near future, as they have stated, but the actual stuff you subscribe to. In the last video, uh, we talked about PlayStation Now, which within that first year was significantly updated and we like that. But now PlayStation Plus got an entire overhaul. It's now broken into three tiers offering different levels of stuff. First, there's the PlayStation Plus Essential tier. That's your basic tier, of course, all the stuff you've been getting in the past. So two free downloadable games a month, the cloud storage, the online multiplayer access with the same pricing structure. Uh, but then for more money, we have the PlayStation Plus Extra tier. This also gives you access to a library of up to 400 PS4 and PS5 games. You know, big stuff from PlayStation Studios and third party, like Miles Morales, Mortal Kombat 11, Returnal, and this is 15 bucks a month or $100 a year. Then, last but not least, there's PlayStation Plus Premium, which has everything and more. You're getting a couple hundred more games to access significantly. Uh, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PS3, and PSP games. The PS3 games are still only streamable with the other generations, including a mix of streaming and downloadable options. This tier allows you to cloud stream these games as long as they're available in your region. And this is 18 bucks a month or 
$120 a year. Now, more options are good, and for some PlayStation diehards, it's probably an easy choice. Premium definitely could use more classic games, and uh, we're still not really seeing the full value, but overall, the library is growing, and if you just wanna play a ton of games, just by ponying up a little bit of subscription cash, even that middle tier does give you a pretty big library, so you got that at least. Again, more choices, more ways to play games, seems good. And along with that, there's the newly rolling out PlayStation Stars, kind of like a loyalty rewards membership program thingy. You can earn rewards for completing completing games and earn points on purchases, and then you can use these points for games, add-ons, some store credit, or little digital collectible trinkets. Uh, there are status levels tied to how many games you buy and like, like you level up uh, with how many trophies that you score that are rare, and it's the early days of this, but it seems okay. On the app, it's pretty nicely laid out. Uh, there's check-in rewards, there's little goals you can check off to earn points and currency. It still doesn't quite feel like a big deal yet, but it could get there. In terms of being a loyal customer, I just want them to bring back PlayStation Underground and the membership cards, that, that stuff was cool. But looking forward to next year, I think at this point, it's gonna come back around to just being all about their games. People have their subscription services, their fancy new versions of streaming or PlayStation Plus or anything like that, but we really can't wait to see what's coming down the line, what just big ass games dedicated for specifically PlayStation 5 are coming. We're expecting all will probably be revealed soon. Hopefully we get some stuff at the Game Awards and then the next E3 or whatever. Whatever Sony does, we're looking forward to seeing what happens. But that was PlayStation 5 two years later. Just a quick look back, a quick chat at what things they've been up to. We wanna hear from you guys in the comments. If you did get your hands on a PS5, how are you feeling? Maybe you just got one or you've had one the entire time. We definitely would like to hear your thoughts. If you like this video, just kind of a catch up, a reminder, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing. Maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.